and say another official hello to everyone joining us today. I do still see our attendance number starting to tick up here, uh, which is good. Very excited to have you all. My name is Sam Bowers. I'm the consultant for continuing education at the State Library of Iowa. And uh, my colleague here, Janae jackson Doring, uh, joining me down from our basement studio. Um, and uh, she is here today to talk all about the tweens. So uh, we had a lot of fun defining what a tween was. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. And um, Janae, uh, just an absolute, absolute expert in this. So I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. So thanks, Janae. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Sam. Good morning, or good morning, good afternoon. I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me see. Okay, and can everyone see the screen? It should say it's all about the tweens. Screen looks great. Perfect. All right, let's get started. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Janae jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the State Library of Iowa. And that picture is a picture of me as a tween. Yes, that is me as a 12-year-old. I had to dig for that picture because <laughs> I'm like, I know I have a picture of myself as a tween. Um, but, and I see the chat, so cute. Thank you. Um, if you need help with issues, questions, concerns, or just running by program ideas, please feel free to get a hold of me. Uh, my phone and email contact information is down below. So please reach out. And I do love to visit and I do bring books with me. So please reach out. And really quickly, what is our plan today? Today, we're just going to talk about who tweens are, what do they want, how can we best serve this age group. Um, I will be sharing program examples and ideas because I've seen some different programs at different libraries and programs that I've done personally myself. Um, we'll also share collection development and planning tips and some resources and closing. So first of all, if we're gonna talk about tweens, just who are they? This group is roughly ranging from ages eight to 12. So roughly you're looking at that third through sixth grade crowd. Um, a lot of us have to remember that they are in transition. So they're the, they're the group that's not exactly a teen and they're not exactly, they're not a child either. They want to do what the teens are doing, but not quite yet. Um, they love to share opinions. They love to share what's going on, what's in their world. They love to share just basically what's on their mind. And this group, they are the ones that are either traveling with their caregiver to the library, or they have the ability to come to the library on their own, either walking or biking, the bus. However, they are getting to the library either way, either through their caregiver or by themselves. And this group is going through changes. Oh, puberty. They're going through that bodily, the bodily changes. And with their cognitive skills, tweens are becoming aware of their own thoughts and the thoughts of others. This group is able to think critically and develop their own social connections. And these, this information is from the Child Development Institute. Um, and the big number 25 at the bottom right corner, that is the age when the brain is fully developed. And that's according to the National Institute of Health. So they're still learning, they're still growing, they're thinking critically, and we wanna be able to help them achieve that. So what do tweens want? This group, they crave independence. They crave connection. They want to be able to do things on their own. Um, and that fits in with the hands-on learning and exploration. They want to be able to feel and make and touch. They want to fit in and belong to a group and make friends. I don't know about you guys, but growing up as a tween and in middle school, that's a hard time. It's a hard transition going from elementary to middle school. So they're wanting to fit in and make friends. And this is a group that likes to explore things that interest them. So think of hobbies and collections. 
And again, this group is a make group and a create group. They love to make things, take it apart, or create and put things together. And for the library, we want the library to have programs and spaces that nurture that development and what they want. So how can we serve tweens? So I've thought of three things. Ask, just ask tweens what they want. They, they have great opinions, they have great ideas, and they will tell you, hey, I would love to see a scavenger hunt about Wednesday from the show Wednesday from Netflix. So ask them what they want. Ask them what programs they'd like to see, what, what events they'd like to see at the library. Um, ob observe. What are they interested in? Um, think about your current trends in pop culture and your community. I had a couple tweens that would come to my old library that asked for Five Nights at Freddy's books, or they asked for um, scavenger hunts with Flat Stanley or scavenger hunts with my, uh, excuse me, Minecraft. So what are they interested in? Think about what's going on in pop culture and in your community and think relevance. The library is for everyone and we wanna be relevant to our team, tweens, excuse me. I'm gonna move this part of my screen. And look to your collection. A big thing for me when I was a youth librarian, I really looked at the returns, like our recently returned shelves, because I was interested in what the teens, tweens, excuse me, what the tweens were reading. So really look at what books are they bringing back? What books are they checking out? What kinds of books are your tweens in your community? What are they asking for? Um, and what books are in your collection right now that can support tween programming? And someone asked about the slides, if, if you'll be able to get the slides. Yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna go through just really quickly some program examples and ideas with you. Uh, this program is from my former uh, library that I worked at, Des Moines Public Library, and my colleague, Jen Levesque, hosted this program. Um, this was a kid's Pokemon card swap. And I don't know about you, but Pokemon just seems to be the one, the one type of uh, entity that just keeps growing and growing and growing. Pokemon never stops. There's, so people just love Pokemon. Kids love Pokemon. Um, but at the Franklin Library, Jennifer had a kid's Pokemon card swap, and it was a very simple program. She said that she set up tables and chairs in the meeting room, and the tweens came in with their own Pokemon cards and binders to trade cards with others. And she set this up during uh, the winter break. The only thing that she had as far as like a giveaway she did a drawing with three prizes um, that were given away from the library. And if memory serves me right, she gave away a binder and I think it was some Pokemon cards. And I can't remember what the third item is, but I can ask her. So she gave away three prizes during the program. And it was awesome because you have tweens that may have not get, have the social interaction at school or at home, they're able to interact with other kids, other peers their age, swap cards and talk about Pokemon, all things Pokemon. Um, one thing to note with tween programs, as I said, caregivers are usually bringing them to the library. Um, you will have little ones come. That's just a given um, since the caregiver is the one that's giving them the transportation to and from the library. Just be experienced it is to be expected that little kids might show up. And with this program, Jen noticed that. So for the little ones, she set up coloring, coloring pages, a coloring page table, excuse me, for coloring. And she also had uh, a button making station where the caregiver and kids could make their own Pokemon buttons. She said she had over 50 people attend. So this was a very popular program, easy peasy just having fun with the kids, 
letting them trade their own cards. And it was a great way to foster that learning, get those social skills out and promote the collection because that's a great time to promote your collection as well. This program, this is the Kauai drawing. Um, this was held at the Iowa City Public Library on January 5th. And for those of you who are new to Kauai, um, Kauai is the Japanese word for cuteness in English. So it's a style of drawing in where there's a thick black outline, pops of color. So this is a very popular style with tweens and teens. And so at Iowa City Public Library, they had a program where tweens could come to the library and join their children's library for a tutorial and experiment with drawing with their own everyday objects in the Kauai style format. Um, and these were some books that I know that I've seen that supported that program. If you are not a, a artist, that's okay. Just putting out different materials that the tweens can draw and learn from, that is okay. Put out paper, put out different types of pens, coloring pencils, different types of books so that way they can learn the Kauai style. So this would be just a fun program to do simple and easy where you're bringing your collection, again, the books that you have in your collection out for the tweens to look at, draw, and that's a time where they can share those ideas with you. Hey, I, I just went to this Kauai program. Can you guys maybe do another program with Candy Sushi? So having these programs where they're just open-ended and exploring, that's giving tweens a way to experiment and have fun and possibly through conversation, tell you about more programs that they want to see at the library. This idea, I really adored this idea. Um, I like to visit the programming website, the programminglibrarian.org website. This program is called the I Survive Day. Um, the Library Center in Springfield, Missouri, they created an I Survive Day at their library. And all of the stations were created based on the I Survive books. So one station had a tornado in a bottle station where the tweens can learn how to make a tornado using the two liter pop bottle. There was also a shark attack station where they could compete in a shark quiz and check out books and facts that have shark facts and information. And then this bottom picture to your left in the red, that is a make a boat sink or float activity from the I Survive, I Survive the Titanic book. Um, so that's just a boat that is with aluminum foil, made out of aluminum foil, and it has marbles in it. Um, I thought this would be a really, really cool program idea. So if you're looking for program ideas that if you have kids that loved I Survived, this would be a cool program to host at your library. I did put in my uh, slides, in the notes, the links to all the websites. So that way, if you're wanting to learn more information, you're able to do so. Bad Art Night. <laughs> um, this is a program that a couple librarians at the Des Moines Public Library would host this program. And Maddie Bassman, who I think she's in here in the chat, um, she hosted this program at the East Side Library. Um, this was a very popular program for her. And Maddie, I hope if you can hear me, um, she would set out leftover art supplies on covered tables and tweens could make whatever bad art they chose. And then after everything was done, um, she would award a prize for the best bad art uh, at the program. And it was a really cool program because families could get involved as well in helping make bad art. Um, it was a very fun program. I also hosted it at South. Just a very fun time. Kids can make, tweens can make silly, wacky, fun things. And it's a good way to get rid of any leftover art supplies that you have. Um, so definitely consider 
having a bad art night program at your library. Race day. I don't know if you have fans of Hot Wheels or just racing in general. Um, this is a program I held at Central Library, and this is called Race Day at the Library. Um, the picture in the top left corner is a picture of a racetrack made out of cardboard. So I gathered as much large and small cardboard as I could with uh, scissors, construction paper, masking tape, markers, popsicle sticks, and I reserved the meeting room and I just set the supplies on the tables and the tweens and the parents, they picked whatever they wanted and then they made their own racetrack at the library. They could make signs, they could make tunnels. Um, as you can see in the bottom two pictures, um, you could just take uh, paper towel tubes, toilet paper tubes, cut them up to make tunnels. Um, it was a really, really fun program. I also had race car books or car books or driving books on display, fiction and nonfiction books. So if tweens wanted to check them out, they could, or use them as examples to, to give them inspiration to make their tunnels and make their racetrack. In the advertisement for this program, I also put, please bring your own car to test your racetrack. Um, and some kids did, and that was great. For those that didn't, I also purchased some race little tiny race cars on Amazon so that way no child felt left out no tween felt left out um so that was a fun program I held it during spring break and we had a really nice turnout it was fun it was creative and the kids got to take everything home so that way they could practice with their race tracks at home it was super duper fun okay STEAM, now STEAM day at the library. I know it's usually called STEM, but I feel that art gets missed out from STEM. And I know there's some tweens that are really, really good at art and they love to draw and they love to color. Um, so at the branch that I worked at, we held a STEAM day at the library during spring break. Um, and it was super fun. We had all types of tweens coming, some little ones, of course, and we had some parents, grandparents, you name it, they came in. Um, but I broke up the meeting room into different stations. So we had a paper airplane making station. We had a table that was just nothing but snap circuits. Um, if you don't know what snap circuits are, it's the picture in the bot, like the bottom right bottom corner sort of. It's the big box that says Snap Circuits Junior. We bought a couple of those kits and the tweens had fun making the little helicopters fly in the air and making sounds. It's teaching them circuitry with just basically snapping circuits. And it has a booklet that shows you which projects to work on. Super fun, super easy. Um, the kit was 20 bucks. We had a coloring table station where we had coloring sheets. We had Demco coloring bookmarks, scratch art bookmarks that the kids, the tweens could color and take home. A Lego table, because let's face it, Legos are still popular no matter where you go, no matter how old you are. We also had Kiva blocks. Those are the blocks on your screen at the bottom right corner, the wooden blocks. Those are really cool because you can make ramps, you can make towers, you can make bridges, anything you want with Kiva blocks. Um, those were a really good investment. I loved having those because their imagination is the impossible. The possibilities are endless. Also, this top picture with the three copters, that was a separate program. And we made twirly copters out of paper. So there's a template, and I will share that with you too, where you can make your own paper copters. You can, you, you can just make them simply as a paper copter, or like in this picture, you can make them light up using Chibitronics LED circuit stickers. Um, so in this picture, 
the tweens, what they would do, we would take wire, um, excuse me, copper tape and it's adhesive. We would cut it out based on the pattern that I gave them. I had coin cell batteries, uh, the binder clips, so that way the, the battery would stay in place. And then they would put on these LED circuit lights on the copper uh, tape, so that way it lights up. And then you just throw it in the air and it spins. And it's so cool. The lights are so cool when you see the copter spin. Um, at the bottom left corner, I put a the links to the Amazon order for Chibitronics. And also this is a video from Curious Jane Twirly Copters. So that way you can see how the Twirly Copters work. Um, so definitely check that out. It's awesome. It's a fun, fun activity. And of course, food programs. You can't go wrong with food programs. Teens like food programs, but also your tweens love food programs too. Um, some of the programs I've done, I've had haunted house programs where the tweens got to make how to haunted houses with graham crackers or pop tarts. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, it's quite messy. Um, and I asked Heidi to donate frosting. And so they donated tubs of frosting and I would just purchase the, uh, the pop tarts and the graham crackers and the candy pieces. And they got to make their own haunted house. Super fun. Um, taste test challenges. Altoona Public Library this week, they are hosting a taste test challenge with Pop-Tarts. So you could have a room full of tweens, blindfold them, and have them taste test Pop-Tarts to see which ones they can, they can guess. Um, and if you don't want to use Pop-Tarts, you could use Oreos, pudding, candy bars. So you could do taste test challenges. Uh, in the top right, corner. Um, this was a program I did at South called the Nailed It Challenge based off of the show, uh, net, the Netflix show Nailed It. Um, I had cupcakes brought to the library and different types of frosting that I bought or purchased and candies. And the tweens had several minutes to make their own mini cupcake designs based off of ideas from the show. It was messy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And I gotta tell you, if you have food programs with sugar, get ready for that sugar rush. I would recommend buying bottled water for these programs, just so that way they can have some water because that's a lot of sugar, let's face it. Um, so definitely think about having a Nailed It Challenge program at your library. And in December, I know there's gingerbread houses and librarians make gingerbread houses with their with their, um, their tweens, um, but consider making STEM gingerbread houses. Um, so using royal icing, whether you purchase it or if you make it yourself, um, using candy pieces and having them put the house together, like the houses down below, to test how strong it is, how durable is it? Maybe it's too big, maybe it's too small, maybe you need to add more layers. Um, so, when you're doing a gingerbread house program, try to add some STEM into that. So that way it's getting their critical thinking skills uh, going. So, all right, this is the kind of like the mother load of other program ideas. Um, so other program ideas, themed escape rooms. If you can come up with a, or Harry Potter themed room or a Minecraft, um, Queens really loved theme escape rooms. So that could be a program idea at your library. Perler beads, meld, melding those perler beads together to make creations. Lego clubs. I used to hold a Lego club at Mount Pleasant Public Library and we would have a theme each month. And then the kids would build something based on that theme. Um, and I always had a snack after the program for the tweens. Um, and that was very, very popular. So try a Lego club if that works for your for your community. Shrinky dinks. Shrinky dinks are fun where they just get this paper and it's kind of like a frosted white paper. They can decorate it any way they want, cut it out, and then it cooks into the toaster oven and 
Once it's done, they have this little creation. You can use, you can take the shrinky dinks and hook it to keychains. You can make earrings. Possibilities are endless. Also, washi tape. I love washi tape. And if you don't know what washi tape is, washi tape is Japanese rice paper that is adhesive. And you can take, it's removable too. So you can remove washi tape. Um, but you could use that for a decorating program. You can decorate vases. You could decorate pencils, pens. Um, washi tape is a fun, fun, fun type of uh, adhesive. And there's all different kinds of washi tape. There's washi stickers. You, the possibilities are endless with washi tape. Um, so painting programs. So if you want to paint, you could do watercolor paints, emoji paintings, where you go and get little tiny um, canvases and they could paint their own emojis. Um, so painting programs are very popular. Air dry clay programs. I've done a lot of air dry clay um, and I recommend the Crayola air dry clay because it just works better. Um, but just putting out some air dry clay and letting the tweens make whatever they want and then talk about it afterwards. Um, that's always been a fun program. Soap making, soap making is a lot of fun. Um, scavenger hunts, scavenger hunts never go out of style. They are big here in Des Moines. I know that for sure. Um, so just having a themed scavenger hunt. And again, a themed scavenger hunt, that's something that's popular and relevant to your tweens. Um, never goes out of style. This program right here, the paint by sticker program, one of my co old colleagues at, I believe it was Forest Avenue Library, what she did, she bought the book, the paint by sticker book. And if you've never used those books, they're pretty cool. You take out the papers because they all have different designs. And then what she did, she took out the stickers that the sticker sheets that were inside. And then kids could pick whatever design they wanted. And this and the accompanying sheet of stickers, and they made their own designs to make and take home. You could do that as a program, or you could do that as a passive program. So again, another simple, simple program. And coloring programs, whether it's coloring um, up at this top here, this next to the paint by sticker book. I used to put out as passive programs these fuzzy coloring posters from Oriental Trading. And I would just buy two or three packs during summer reading. And that was a passive program. I put out the, the markers and I covered the tables and tweens were more than welcome to just sit and color as many as they wanted and take home. And then we just did kind of like a head count of how many um, attended the program. So, and the little starred programs at the very bottom, those programs can be offered as passive programs, so. So that is kind of like the mother load of programs, uh, program ideas. And with collection development and, and planning, it's very, for me, with collection development, my focus was to buy what they want to read. So purchase books tweens that are, tweens are asking for, that are popular, relevant, because they could also lead to program ideas. Um, again, the, the one example I told you of the young man who wanted Five Nights at Freddy's books. I, I knew He knew what when they came out, he knew what uh, volume he wanted. And I just picked it up and got it because I knew if he was asking for it, other tweens were gonna ask for it too. Um, I put in the description right here on this page the, to read brightly. If you don't know, readbrightly.com, it's a great resource. They have awesome programs, or excuse me, awesome book lists for tweens. So all different types of genres. They cover tween books, teen books, um, children's books, preschool, you name it. Um, but this would be a good starting point if you're looking for book lists for tweens. Um, I would definitely use readbrightly.com. And on top of that, when you're purchasing books, book talk them, read them, share these books with your tweens. 
If you see that they're coming in wanting the next babysitter club or re wanting babysitter club books, tell them, hey, did you know this other book is coming out too? Um, so share books that they might enjoy. Um, I know recently at the library that I just worked at, um, these were the popular ones that I saw tweens asking for. Um, the Babysitter Club books, those are so popular with the new covers. Um, I've seen tweens ask for both the chapter book and the graphic novel format, um, but that could lend to a program too. So if you have tweens wanting to know about babysitting and the Babysitter's Club, maybe you could host a program about uh, Babysitting 101 and how, how do you start as a babysitter? What would you need to learn to become the great babysitter? Um, that could be a program idea. Um, I love the Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library series. It's fun, all the puzzles. The puzzles kind of stumped me too <laughs> when I read those books. Um, those are a great, that is a great book series. Maybe that could be a, for a program, you could have a Escape from Mr. Lynch, Lemoncello's library event at your library where you have different puzzles that the tweens might have to solve. Last Kids on Earth by Max Brelier. Again, all these tweens are facing uh, zombies in this case. Maybe you might have a zombie program for tweens or a zombie creation where they take dolls and they take them apart and change, make them into crazy dolls or whatnot. Um, so definitely buy what they want to read and make it popular and relevant and it could lead to program ideas and share those books with them. And a couple of weeks ago, I had um, a question about uh, how do I plan for when tweens get out of school? How do, how do I do this? Um, for those of you who have been doing this for years, I understand you know exactly to get the copy of the school district's calendar. Um, we have so many new youth librarians um, coming to the profession. My advice to you, get a copy of that school district's calendar that's gonna be kind of like your holy grail of planning events for, te for teens, tweens, elementary, middle school, high school. Get a copy of that school district's calendar and plan your events when tweens have no school, early outs, whatever the case may be for your community. Um, recently here in Des Moines, we had a cyber attack with the Des Moines Public Schools and I believe the kids were out for two days, if memory serves me right. Um, and, I, and that's, and that's you know, it's unfortunate because caregivers are struggling to come up with babysitting plans. And I don't know what my tweens are gonna do. Um, so have some passive activities available, especially for those unexpected days off um, with, with all of these crazy situations where these unfortunate events happen. And when you have an influx of all these uh, tweens coming to your library, it's best to have those passive activities, something in the back of your pocket that you can pull out and say, hey, we're glad you're here. Here's some games. Hey, we're glad you're here. Here's some crafts that make and take crafts. So have those passive activities in the back of your pocket um, when those unexpected days off occur. And if you're really, 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 really stuck, I put together a lot of websites I like. Um, the American Library Service to Children, um, they have some tween programs on that site. Curious Jane, I love the magazine. If you've never picked up a Curious Jane magazine, um, they are great. They have activities geared for third through sixth grades. Um, I put the link to their online videos because they have tutorials of different tween um, activities that you could do with your tweens. Um, super great ideas. The OntarioLibrarian.com has really, really good tween program activities. And I added Peter Blensky. And you guys are like, who's Peter Blensky? I don't know who Peter Blensky is. Peter Blensky, uh, he served on the 2022 Newberry Committee last year, and he's a tween programmer. 
And I had stumbled onto his page and I was looking at the Lego library and I was like, wow, his page has really, really awesome tween programs. Um, so I put the link to his web, website for legolibrarian.com and his Pinterest page. Uh, take a peek at that because some of the programs he was putting together, I was just like, I want to go to that. Um, so definitely take a peek at Peter Blensky's uh, website and Pinterest page. Programminglibrarian.org. That is a wonderful website. It has lots of different types of program ideas. It'll break down the costs of how, of how much the program was, what the age group is for, who it's targeted to. Um, they usually put like PDFs for people to uh, print and take. Um, so definitely check out programminglibrarian.org. School Library Journal's Teen Programs in a Box. They have teen and tween program ideas. So definitely take a peek at that. Um, for those of you who are on social media, um, I love Teen Services Depot on Instagram. That librarian, her name is Dawn. She comes up with really, really cool programming ideas. Some of it is mostly teens, but there are some tween program ideas as well. So definitely check her out on Instagram. On Facebook, there is Storytime Solidarity. Um, it is a group that offers tween and teen programming advice, as well as story time tips and ideas. Um, and at the bottom, don't forget webjunction.org. They have three tween webinars, programming webinars that you can watch that would maybe jumpstart some ideas for you as well. Um, and just finally, just, just remain relevant. Um, ask tweens what programs they'd like to see in their library. Uh, know their interests. They have so many interests. So get to know them. Get to know what they want, what they'd like to see in their library, because those tweens become future teens, and they become future library users, and they become maybe part of your library board. So they are library users, and they know what they're interested in. Um, so provide programs for them to explore their social emotional learning, the critical thinking skills. Um, and programs with tweens are trial and error. Sometimes you may have a program where you get 50 tweens and you're excited and, you know, it was a hit. And other times there may be programs that you have with tweens and you may just have zero and that's okay. It's trial and error. So try, don't be afraid to try new programs. Do not be afraid. Um, and everything old is new again. And why I say that is because of Pokemon, because it, it doesn't matter how old you are, Pokemon is still is still going strong. I it, it amazes me. So everything old is new again. And you've got this. And so that concludes my presentation. Um, so much fun. If we have a minute, um, Emily Van Weirdenheisen, and sorry, Emily, if I said that wrong, from Sioux Center is online. And she mentioned a program in chat that has been a long running tween program at their library. And while I'm kind of rounding up other questions and comments from the chat, Emily, I'm going to allow you to pipe in. And um, I would love it if you could uh, share a little bit about your long running cooking program once, once that pops up for you. I think she's rejoining in audio. So um, oh. yeah, some really great ideas. All right, are you on Emily? Hi, Emily. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your teen tween cooking club. Yeah, so it's for grades four through sixth grade. Um, it started in January 2020. Um, the year before that, I was doing a book club with them and I was, we were talking about the book Love Sugar Magic by mm -hmm. Anna Mariano. And we had, we were doing some no bake cookies and as an activity for that. Um, and the teens, the tweens were like, why can't we have an actual baking club? <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> 
you probably can. <laughs> so then the next, so then in January we started it up and then um, it was a big hit. Of course we had to modify with COVID for a while um, when that hit, but um, we meet um, about four times a semester. So um, we're going to meet in a couple weeks now and we make all sorts of things. Um, we used to do it all in the library's conference room. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I would hook up all the cords and all the toaster ovens and borrow things from staff members. It was quite interesting. But then we got um collaboration with the um, public middle school to use their kitchen. Oh, and wow. so now we use their kitchen. And that is a lot nicer with actual ovens. <laughs> wow. So that's been a really great um, collaboration. Um, we fund it. I just use all my budget <laughs> for that. Not all of it. I use part of it. Um, just for this next semester, I'm going to be charging $5 to attend it because um, they do get a walk away with some good stuff. So to cover some of those costs. So it will now be $5, but you can make anything from really quick cinnamon rolls to quick buns or making pretzels. They're going to make galettes in March, um, right. then cupcakes, cookies, cookie dough, which is not technically cooking, but it was fun. <laughs> that is really fun. So, Sounds like yeah. a great partnership as well. So thanks mm -hmm. for sharing about that. And I yeah. will try to um, dig up. I think you presented Kids First, uh, the pandemic Kids First, you presented on this topic, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> so let me see yeah, if I favorites. can find that link as well while yeah. Janae tackles our last couple of questions. So thanks, Emily, for yeah. um, being on the spot to do that. Um, okay, Janae, there was one thing that I kind of wanted to just call out, which is all of the passive programs that lend themselves so well for this age group. And I think um, you know, anything from some of the art stuff to the um, the building and the creating um, and just can you kind of talk a little bit about how that like the passive programming and the gaining independence kind of all goes together and why that's really good for teens? Sure. So just for, for gaining the independence, tweens, they want choice. They want to be able to pick what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, with the clay programs, the air dry clay, I remember just putting out different types of clay, different colors and saying, this is your space. You can make, you can make whatever you want. Um, I also had cardboard for that um, because bringing clay home is hard. <laughs> so make sure you have cardboard to support their air dry clay pieces. Um, but for passive wise, just giving them different choices. Um, maybe that's putting out an art cart where you put out different types of paper, markers, scissors, different types of um, just different types of art pieces that they can make and take. Um, and besides, if you don't want to use markers, you can use like paint sticks. Um, I love chunkies. Chunkies are my favorite. I don't, you could be a preschooler or a teen. Kids love chunkies. Um, I love you giving different types of art mediums that tweens can express themselves with. It's giving them that choice, that autonomy to make whatever they want. Besides someone just telling them, hey, do this. You can right. It's it's not so much like color this picture in this way. Um, it's exploring and exploration. I love that. Um, one comment I wanted to share that came through in the chat that I think is worth calling out for the recorder recording as well. And Absolutely. I get a little nervous. Like I, I know the STEM acronym and it stands for a special part of what we do in education. And then we add in the arts because arts are so important. And then we have STEAM. And uh, another librarian says in the chat that she adds in R um, and calls it STREAM, which feels like school. Um, you know, by the time you get science, technology, engineering, reading, and math uh, about stream, which is a great, which is a great acronym. Um, Cause wow. when you're doing things like you were talking about, you know, your, um, your Hot Wheels, build a Hot Wheels track and pairing it with some great books about racing, race cars, whatever the culture is, you know, that, that encourages reading and some different types of literacy as well. So stream is great. Um, it's kind of just school. 
though, I would like to point out that <laughs> it's all right. It's very good. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that. And Emily, thank you to you too for sharing. How cool stream. I'm, I'm going to have to look this up now. So yeah, <laughs> um, two, two notes that I also want to call out um, related to having the school calendars on the wall that are also a good idea. Um, a district or a library that encompasses two different school districts and keeps the school calendars taped on multiple different walls of the library so that whoever is scheduling wherever it's at it's easily find um, found and then um, the other thought mentioned there was whenever you're scheduling a big program um, make sure you check it against the the school schedule so you don't want to schedule that big bad art night for the night of the inner town basketball game you know Absolutely. everyone's going to go to the basketball game and they're not going to come to your to your art night so it's kind of more than just when am i going to do this passive program potentially but also when am i not going to pay that big presenter to come in so you get get more folks yeah definitely like for example i know for des moines here they, we have a saint patrick's day parade mm -hmm. um i remember not scheduling big programs on the day of the parade because everybody was going to the parade. Um, so that's a great point to, to make. Excellent. Mm -hmm. point. And then maybe in our last three minutes, someone says programming ideas for Magic Treehouse, which is probably a little bit on the younger end of this tween reading uh, interests, but any ideas on, on what you might do with Magic Treehouse? It's a hugely diverse, I mean, aren't they traveling to all different times and space and yeah. areas for that for magic treehouse you could have a magic treehouse day at your library where you have break it into different stations so they could be visiting you could have a dragon activity or dragon or excuse me a dragon activity at one station or the with dinosaurs before dark a dinosaur craft um, so just taking those books looking through where they travel to and picking out different types of STEM or art activities to support that learning. Um, it might take a little bit of uh, planning, but it could work. Yeah, I think I love the idea of like a multi-station thing. And you, I'm sure you could round up a couple of Magic Treehouse that are on the Civil War or, you know, some different time. Frame. There's There have to be hundreds of Magic Treehouses by now, I would think. And I've lost touch with yeah, the series, well. but... <laughs> There's a lot. Um, I think that that is all the questions that I pulled out. Um, are there any other questions for Janae as we wrap up? And we do need to kind of just end a couple minutes early today as well. So um, Can I one more thing too. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are wondering, what did I order? How much did that cost? I put together a spreadsheet of all the different craft supplies and, and items that I purchased. Um, it's from, there was some stuff I ordered from amazon.com, uh, items that I ordered from Demco and items that I ordered from Oriental Trading. So I will share that with you guys as well. So that way it helps because any way that I can help you guys make your job a little easier, um, I am more than happy to do. Um, also the twirly copter idea, the template for that, I will share with that with you as well, because I have copies of it. Um, so that way you guys can have that as well. It's fun. Good. Yes. Um, I did just post those to Iowa Learns during the set, during uh, our webinar. So you should be able to refresh Iowa Learns and see those as a handout. If you're watching the recording, they'll also be in there as an attachment, um, or we'll have links in the description of the YouTube video as well. So uh, once again, a big thank you to Janae for all of her ideas and thanks to all of you for coming.